If you think America's two-party system is dysfunctional, then you're in the right place. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Art. Every weekday morning I try to do a little uh, video that I hope will encourage discussion. Because I always love a good discussion. But I hate the two-party arguments. They're usually anger-oriented uh, and illogical. Or it, if it's logic at all, they're using the same points, shooting the same bullets that they've been shooting back and forth for the last 40 years. I'm absolutely sick of it. And so I'm going to do everything I can to end the two-party system and reinstate constitutional democracy in the United States of America. And I know that sounds strange to many of you because you grew up thinking the American system was the two-party system. And the two-party system you were taught to believe was our big advantage. <laughs> well, I think you were you were misled. And so I certainly don't... Uh, feel bad about any of the people if they've been a, a Democrat or a Republican in the past. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you've been misled. Um, no, there's no mention of the political parties in the Constitution. Uh, John Locke, who was commonly the best-selling author in the in the colonies. And remember that at that time, the only media that they had was newspapers and books. They read. There was no radio, no broadcast media. Um, and so the books that they bought are a real good indication of where the, the minds of the people were, although they didn't have all the fancy polling and all the stuff that they do nowadays. But, I mean, people had to buy those books. And the the authors that sold over 80% of the books in the colonies in the 20-year in the period of the Revolution and the Constitutional Convention and immediately preceding, um, over 80% of them were anti-party. John Locke was commonly the, the largest selling author, and he said, party is the madness of the masses for the benefit of the few. Boy, is there a, there a, good, a good definition of political party. John Locke. And that's the number one selling author in the colonies at the time of the revolution. Party is the madness of the masses for the benefit of the few. Yeah. The general consensus was political parties were evil, and they were right. So to those of you who have been lied to, you don't have to believe me. Look for yourself. I'd encourage every American citizen to read the Constitution. Read it for yourself. Don't listen to any of these pundits where they just take one phrase and pull it out. Read the whole thing. And tell me where you see any provision for political parties. They didn't want them. Unfortunately, they came in. But the point is, if you're going to be a supporter of the U.S. Constitution, why do you support a political party? It's not in there. They are dividing us. The two corporate parties, and I'm going to call it that because what I'm, 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 my thought is, is, is I would prefer to do away with all political parties. Absolutely. My last job was in safety. I was a safety manager. And we learn in the safety business that if there's a hazard, if there's something that could potentially cause injury or harm, you got to first of all identify that hazard. Well, I've identified that the two-party system is indeed the greatest hazard to America's future because a house divided cannot stand. Whether you choose to quote Abraham Lincoln, who is quoting Jesus Christ, I think it's pretty authoritative. We have become a house divided, and they have no authorization to do it. I resent it totally. So I have no respect for the Democrat or Republican party. But the people in those parties are wonderful people. They've been misled. Read the Constitution for yourself. Political parties are not there. It's the madness of the many for the gain of the few. 
So we're going to have to use the strategy that the rest of the democracies in the world used. Divide and conquer. You know, and, and of course that's what's happened to us, is we've become a divided population, and because of the direct relationship and only two parties, there's no place to go. So we got this trench warfare, and American Congress is, is stymied, and this country's coming apart. So we got to divide them up. I'd love to get rid of them. See, in the safety business, what I started to say is when you identify a hazard, there's two things basically you need to do. Number one, if you can eliminate that hazard, you know, there's a hose laying on the ground, you can eliminate that if it has no purpose, if it's not hooking up to something, put it away, get it out of there, and you lose what we call a trip hazard. Well, it's a big damn trip hazard called the two-party system, and it's tripping up our entire government. It's no longer a government of the people. It's a government of the money, by the money, for the money. Check it out right now. Look at all of the candidates running for president. And what is the number one thing you're going to see? How much money are they raising? The nominee will be whoever raises the most money. That's how you prove leadership in today's of the money, by the money, and for the money party. So I'll tell you the answer right now. <laughs> and I don't believe it should be that way. I believe we need to reform the government and encourage leaders to get into position of leadership, not into position of leadership on your ability to raise money within a corrupted system. I will not accept that. So I'm going to keep swinging my little hatchet. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for those of you who have responded and... Uh, most of them are, are when I run into people, almost all of them, because people are so afraid to be committed, you know, um, and I understand that because it's such a hassle all the time, but that's, that's what I'm trying to make. Free yourself from that hassle. Just set your goal as getting rid of the hassle. <laughs> I think the two parties has got to go. But think about it. Talk about it. At some point, I hope you'll say, yeah, I think the United States is worth saving. Let's have a discussion. Hey, every day is a gift. That's why they call it the present. So I hope you unwrap that present very carefully today because there's some good stuff in there. So I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you can have a great discussion with somebody. Have a great day. <laughs>